and go over the um, molar mass of butane post lab. Um, we've got the values here of what we have for our fake data. Uh, we see that number one, we have 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, number two, we have a barometric pressure of 1.045 uh, atmospheres. Our volume of the gas collected was 100 milliliters. Our initial mass of the butane lighter was 23.95. Our final mass of the butane lighter was 23.75, which gives us a mass of 0 0.20 grams, and these are grams, um, of butane collected. Now, in number eight, we looked at the water vapor pressure chart on page 899 for 25 degrees Celsius, and we figured out that it was tw the partial pressure of water vapor was 23.8 millimeters of mercury. Now, we found out that there's 23.8 millimeters of mercury, and in number nine, it's asking us what is the partial pressure of butane, because we just want the pressure of butane gas. We don't want the pressure of the water vapor inside of it. So the first thing we have to do is we notice that this is in millimeters of mercury. This is in atmospheres. So the first step that we have to do is we have to convert our millimeters of mercury into atmospheres. So we take our 23.8 millimeters of mercury and we go ahead and set it up and we know that uh, there are 760 millimeters of mercury in one atmosphere so we go ahead and set this up and it'll be 23.8 divided by 760 and we get a partial pressure of water vapor of 0 0.0313 atmospheres okay now, in number nine, it wants the partial pressure of just butane. Remember, any time that we are solving for partial pressure, we always subtract from our barometric or our atmospheric pressure. So the partial pressure of butane, which is C4H10, equals our barometric, which is 1.045 atmospheres, minus the partial pressure of water vapor, which is 0 0.0313 atmospheres, and we go ahead and we do that and we see that we get the pressure of butane gas is going to be 1.014 atmospheres. Alright guys, moving on to number 10. It says use the combined gas law to determine the volume in liters of butane at STP, which is standard temperature and pressure. So on this one, we're using the combined gas law, which is P1, V1, all over T1, equals P2, V2, all over T2, okay? Now, in looking at this, we gotta find our variables here. Now, our first pressure, or our P1, is going to be the partial pressure of just the butane, so it's 1.014 atmospheres, okay? And our V1 is going to be the volume of the gas collected, which here's in milliliters, but we go ahead, we divide it by 1,000, and we get 0 0.1 liters. And then our temperature, or our T1, is going to be our 25 degrees Celsius. We change it to Kelvin, so it's 298 Kelvin. Now, it's at standard temperature and pressure, which we know that standard temperature, so our T2, is always going to be 273. And our standard pressure, and in this case P2, which has to be in atmospheres, standard pressure in atmospheres is always 1.0 atm. Okay, so here's our variables. So we got to take our equation. First, we always cross multiply. So we get P1 V1 T2 equals P2 V2 T1. Now from here, we go ahead, we circle what we're solving for. We're solving for the volume in liters, or we're solving for our V2. So we go ahead and divide by what we circle, which is P2 T1, and we see that they go away, and that's going to be our equation. So we go ahead and we take it and plug it in, and we will get a P1 value of 1.014 atmospheres times our V1 value of 0 0.1 liters, times our T2 temperature, which is 273. Kind of squinched in there. And then we go ahead and divide that by P2, which is 1.0 atmospheres, and our T1, which is 298 Kelvin. Okay, go ahead, plug all of this into a calculator. We'll solve for V2, and we get a volume at standard temperature and pressure of 0 0.093 liters.
Yeah, moving on to number 11. It says, use Avogadro's law to determine the number of moles of butane gas. Assume that butane is an ideal gas and that one mole has a volume of 22.4 liters at STP. So on this one, all we're doing is we have our volume right here in liters, and we got this from number 10, and we want to take this into moles. Anytime we go from liter moles, we always use the conversion factor of one mole equals 22.4 liters okay, at STP. So we changed that into SCP, and now we can use this conversion factor. So all we do is we take our 0 0.093 liters of butane, and we set it up. Liters is on top, so liters goes on bottom. 22.4 liters equals 1 mole. And this is all butane. And we go ahead and we take that and divide 0 0.093 times 1 divided by 22.4, and we get an answer of 0 0.004 moles of butane. Now, in number 12, all it's asking us to do is to find the experimental molar mass of butane. So all we have to do is we know that our molar mass is going to equal our grams of what we have. So we look over here and we see that we have grams of butane collected and we have our moles. So it's grams divided by moles. So our molar mass is going to equal are 0 0.2 grams all divided by how many moles we have which is 0 0.004 moles to give us our molar mass or our big M of right around 50 grams and that'll be our answer to number 12 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.004 will give us right around 50 grams of butane, which is C4H10. Now, from here, our next one, on number 13, it's going to ask us to find the molar mass of butane. Now, on number 13, all we have to do is just take this. We have carbon and hydrogen. We have four carbons, ten hydrogens. We multiply them by their atomic mass off of the periodic table and we get our 48.04 and we get our 10.10 we add this up and this is number 13's answer and we get a 58.14 so the molar mass that we calculated in number 12 that is our experimental molar mass what we just calculated down here which is the answer to number 13 is our theoretical or our actual molar mass, which is 58.14. Together. Here it's asking us to determine the percent error using our accepted molar mass of butane. So what we're going to do here is we know that our experimental molar mass is 50 grams. Okay? This is what we measured in the lab. Now, our theoretical or our accepted molar mass is 58.14 grams, and that is our accepted. The equation that we're going to be using is the percent error equation. Okay? It equals the absolute value of the measured minus the accepted all over the accepted times 100. And that absolute value just means that if it's a negative number, we go ahead and we make it a positive number. We just get the magnitude of it. So from here, let's go ahead and plug all of our numbers in that we have. Okay, our measured is, we're taking the absolute value of our measured, which is 50, minus our accepted, which is 58.114 grams, divided by our accepted, which is 58.14, times 100. Okay, so go ahead and do this part for first. Go 50 minus 58.14, enter, divided by 58.14, enter, multiplied by 100, and we should get an answer of in our calculator of negative uh, 14. But remember, we're taking the absolute value, so just say that it is 14%. And this is the error that occurred when we did our lab.